Hello and welcome to the fifth and last training session for the new public GIS viewer. Today we're going to go over the tasks tab. So once the application opens, you can just click on the tasks tab to get to these variety, these different tools here. Um, Self-explanatory, but I'll go over each one. Printing the map, you can choose from different layouts, whether it be landscape with and without a legend, portrait with, with or without a legend, eight and a half by 11 size, or we also have a landscape version uh, 11 by 17 inches size. So choose whatever layout you wish. The output format is PDF. Um, you can set your own map scale or you can use the current extent and there aren't any grids available to add at this time. You can change your title and then just click on create file and it'll generate your PDF and uh, give you a link to open that up. Just click on open file and there's your map. Has an overview window and nice layout. Our disclaimer, typical disclaimer, and then it also shows the scale at which you printed the map at. You can save this as a PDF, file save as, or you can print it from here. You can export the map as an image, and there's a variety of image formats, as well as include the georeference data if you want to bring that image into maybe a desktop software application that you utilize. Uh, very straightforward, same kind of thing as printing. You select your format, and you can choose to include the georeference data if you want. Click on Create Image. and then click on download. Uh, choose to save it or you can open it in whatever viewer you have. Um, you can save your image and then open it up in an image viewer if you choose or you can email it or whatever. This is a pretty nice tool that we've added to this version of the application. Um, typically here at the city we often get requests for different data sets so this allows um, users to download their own data. So you just click on the download data tool. As you can see it's going to have the progress bar show up. You need to wait until that completes. And then the table of contents will change after you agree to the disclaimer. Once you've read that, click on OK. The table of contents window changes. You can choose whatever data set you want. You can also hit Control and select multiple ones. And then just click Next. You can use the current map area or you can define a custom geometry. Just be advised that if you use the entire extent, it's going to be a lot of data depending on which data set you choose. So it will increase the period of time that it takes to actually extract and give you the ability to download that data. So I'm just going to define a custom geometry. You've got a couple of different choices. You can just draw a rectangle or you can draw your own polygon. I'll choose that tool or option. You can draw your polygon over whatever area you're interested in and it's going to clip the data based on that geometry. So once it's captured the geometry of your selection polygon, you just click next. We've provided three different output formats. 
Um, the first two are typical GIS software outputs or, or uh, file formats, um, ESRI software typically, but other GIS packages can read in shape files. File, geode ge file geodatabases are um, strictly accessed by ESRI software, or you can download it as an AutoCAD drawing, a DWG. So I'm just going to choose shape file and then click finish. It'll extract the data of the data sets that you chose and zip it up into a zip file and provide you a link for you to download it and save that zip file. There's the link and then just choose save as. Um, decide where you want to save it. And then once you've downloaded the zip file, inside there are the data sets that I chose. In this case, fire stations and parks. So I can then take this data and open it up in a, a desktop GIS viewer if I want. So a nice tool. And um, we'll be taking requests to add to that list um, the data sets that we initially provided are some of the more typical data sets but if users need different data they can send us an email and and we can add that to the list that you, so that you can choose that to download once you're done with the tool just click close and the tool will close itself the next one is sharing your map this is a nice feature as well so if i click share map it's going to give me basically a url with the coordinates and the zoom scale and everything preset i can copy that to a clipboard and you may get this pop-up uh, when using this tool it's basically letting the silverlight plugin for your internet browser access the clipboard at the operating system level so I'm going to say, remember my answer. I'm going to say, yes, it can access the clipboard. Now, if I go into whatever application, I can go into an email or maybe a document or kind of whatever program I wish, I can paste that URL into a document or an email or what have you. So I'll just use Word as an example. So that is an active URL. It's fairly lengthy, but that one URL will take you basically to the GIS viewer. Um, I'll show you. Let me close my browser. So from this document, I can click on the link and it's going to open up Internet Explorer and take me to the zoom level and the scale that I was at. So if you wanted to zoom into an area and share this URL with a coworker or a family member or what have you, you can send this URL to them. They'll be able to see what you're seeing on your map. Once it opens up, it's where I was at. So pretty nice feature, be able to collaborate with others. So back on the tasks bar, or tab. Okay, so the next tool that we're going to cover is the Contact Us tool. Just a quick way to address an email message. It'll utilize your default email client. It'll open up a new message, address it to us. You can report issues or what have you, and then just send it on to us, and it'll come straight to us, and we can respond and get in touch with you or um, discuss enhancements that you may you may have so just a simple way to communicate with the gis staff here at the city uh, the next tool is the help menu pretty straightforward 
Um, it just opens up in another window. It's um, browser based, um, has information about, you know, some of the different tools that are in the application. Just another way for you to have assistance if you need a reference for how to get around or utilize the application in addition to these training videos. Finally, the what's this tool is kind of nice. If you select that, you can click on an item inside the application and it'll take you to the help menu item specific to that. So for example, the I want to menu, it'll explain kind of what that is. So it's just context driven help items out of the uh, web based help menu. You can also access the help menu here over here on the right. Um, and lastly, I'll, I'll cover just a couple of more things and wrap up. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, look for a specific item, let's say in the city facilities layer, um, instead of panning around my map or zooming in, trying to find it that way, I can use this tool to search for maybe a specific location or, um, in this case, I'll, I'll go to Cowtown. So you can use that search tool. It'll bring it up in the results list in the table of contents, and then you can click on it and there's Cowtown, for example. So you can utilize that for some of the other layers as well, such as parcel addresses or other items. And the last thing I'm gonna cover is the I want to menu here. And it's just kind of like the right click context menu. It's a way to get quickly get to some of the more commonly used tools uh, you can run the property report, you can download data, search for an object, go to the measuring tool, instead of having to interact with each of the individual tabs. It's all the same tools, just kind of in a conveniently located menu so that you could kind of quickly get to them. So that concludes the last session. I really hope that you enjoy the new application. And please don't forget to contact us and provide feedback, ask questions, request enhancements, what have you. Thanks and have a great day.